Championes, championes, ole, ole, ole. That's right, guys. We've won the league. So then guys, welcome back to the Stones Rolling On Up and now to episode 46 of our series. And as you must have guessed from both the title and the intro, we have indeed won League 2. We've been confirmed as champions. It happened, I think, two games ago in-game itself, in between last episode and this episode. And I am so, so pleased. If you missed the last episode where we managed to secure promotion, then feel free to go back and watch it. There'll be a link right above me that you can click on. And when we took on Salford and Grimsby, and then, as I say, secure promotion from League 2. But as I say, in between the episodes, we have been crowned League 2 champions. We've done pretty well. We've played four games. We've come back for the final two of the season, regardless of the fact they're not really meaning anything. In those four games, we won two, we drew two, played very well, and I am so happy. It's unbelievable that we've got consecutive promotions and we've won the league title at our first time of asking. We first of all played Bradford City away. The team initially I was looking to play last episode, but due to the way that the table kind of was shaping up, we didn't need to play them to get promotion. And when we played them, we got a one-all draw. Very unluckily, they scored in the 89th minute, but I didn't care at that point whatsoever. We then faced Northampton, and we got a very decent 2-1 win. Two goals from set pieces from Lillian Brassier, the backup centre-back, essentially. I was giving him a game, and he scored two goals, so... I was very pleased with him. He's played very well recently for some random reason. And yeah, the team itself has done pretty well too. Because after we played Northampton, we then played Wrexham, which is when we secured the league title at home at the Gallagher. And to top it off, we won it with a Martin Gillespie hat-trick as well. It was a brilliant performance. We completely destroyed Wrexham and it was fantastic to get a little animation at the end of the game when we lifted the League 2 trophy. Annoyingly though in this game, Zach Swanson, our right wing back, got injured and he's broken his leg. So he's going to be out between five and six months. He may well miss the beginning of next season. Thankfully, because obviously we're going to have the summer break and stuff, he hopefully won't miss too much, but very frustrating that he has got injured. After that game, we then took on Rochdale at home. We got a one all draw, very meh performance really. Ike Ugbo had a really bad game in this. So it was just a very indifferent performance. We scored from a set piece. That was about all we did, to be honest. And that was essentially the game over. But as I say, because of that, in League 2, we'll see that lovely C icon against our name on it. Because Maison United have won the league. We've done it, mind you, without having a top goal scorer in the league. We've had very good overall performers, as you can see. But no top goal scorer. Regardless, though, I don't really care. We've still got two games to play today. And that's Newport County and Forest Green Rovers. So let's get into the tactics for that first game up against Newport. So tactically then, guys, we're going pretty full strength. There's a couple of small rotation players in there, obviously because of the injury to Zach Swanson as well. We've had to make a change there. But it's going to be Lewis Ward in net. Sanderson, Harry Clark and Lillian Brassier, the on-form centre-back, with three goals in three games. Then it's Joel Senior right back, filling in for Swanson with that broken leg. McCallum at left back, Cole Palmer and Maddie Smith in the centre of midfield. Jan Dander just in front of them. And then Martin Gillespie and then the youngster, Gianmarco Tafani, starting up front. So let's get this first game underway and see how we do against Newport as League Two champions. Right, let's submit our side and see how we get on in this first game. I'm actually quite interested to see, to be honest, how we get on because I believe we're three points off of the record points total ever in League 2. I think the record stands at 102 and we've just hit 100 points after our most recent draw. So one win from either of our two remaining games and we break that record. So I am really hopeful we can do it. I'm going to get into the dressing room. I'm going to say we should be winning this one fairly comfortably because we're league champions. So of course we should because I have faith in the lads. And let's get out there and see how we do. We're away for the first game. We're in the purple at Newport's ground. Let's get this game kicked off and hopefully with a win to start the episode. Now, of course, with it being the final episode of the league campaign, and as these games aren't exactly that meaningful, to be totally honest, I'm going to probably run through with you kind of what the plans are for next season. And also with the upcoming release of FM21 in the next kind of six weeks or so, 
especially with the beta probably going to get released because I believe the game is set for a 24th November release so the beta will probably be roughly about the 10th or the 11th November probably I'll go through kind of the plans with with this save and also kind of what's going to happen when FM21 comes out this first half though is whizzing by we haven't seen a highlight all half and it looks like it's just going to go straight to half time it is wow okay i don't know if the lads are on the beach already they probably are but that half was horrendous i'm going to say to them assertively i'm not happy because it was dreadful and tafani is struggling he picked up a knock before the game so i'm going to take tafani off but Ugbo, it's just not risk him I'm going to say to him he can make the difference out there you like that but let's go up to the second half and see how we do we've got an early highlight here with matty smith going to the far post and brassier this time can't get his fourth goal in four games sadly so firstly, in terms of the league campaign, in terms of how it's gone this year, of course, it's been brilliant. It really has. And of course, you've probably all seen just how well it's gone. I cannot understand to us how it has gone this well, because I'm, one, I'm manager and I'm normally pretty horrendous and pretty rubbish at keeping momentum and stuff going because I'm, you know, I tinker around too much and I mess stuff up. But it has worked and I've stuck with a pretty consistent formation and it's all gone pretty well. In terms of what I want to change going forward for next season, there's not a huge amount really. Hang on, is that goal? It is Joel Senior, right back with his eight for the season. I don't understand how he scored quite so many goals this year because I think before he'd only scored once or twice last year, but this year he has kicked on and done a very good job as the backup right back. But in terms of the positions, definitely attacking midfield. I've mentioned in previous episodes that I'm not that keen on Yandanda and I'm really not, not as a first choice. So I'm going to definitely look to get a proper star player in that attacking midfield role. The other position I'm not entirely sure on is our pressing forward role, the one alongside Martin Gillespie. Now, Ugbo's had a very good year, don't get me wrong, and I like Tafani, but if a player becomes available who is very much top-notch, I will be making a bid. And there's also the possibility that Jamie Thomas could be moving out. I think he only has a year left on his deal, and I'm paying him way too much money as it is. He's on three grand a week. I think he's the highest paid player, and he's no longer the best player in the team anymore. It's not like, hang on. Oh, that's got to be offside. How is that not offside? Okay, I've no idea how that wasn't an offside goal. I'm going to say to lads, I want us to go attacking. I want us to go out and win this game, please. Because I want to get that 100 points, please, game. So let's get Jamie on. We'll put him up front. We'll put Gillespie on the right. And uh, Ike is on the inside forward. We'll pull the wing backs back a bit, though. Hopefully that can make a difference. But I say, definitely I need to have a look up front. The goalkeeper I'm very happy with. Lewis Ward is definitely going to be first choice next year. Not going to change that. And I say I need to have a little bit more of a look as to what I want to do with the defence and the midfield, etc. Of course, we've got a couple of players on loan. Whether or not they'll stay next year or if they go back or not, I don't know. I need to speak to the clubs and see what will happen with that. But hopefully we can keep the likes of definitely McCallum at left back. He's one of the main ones I want to keep because at left back, he's very, very good for us. But this game looks like he's just going to die out at a one all draw. It's been a really quick game. We've dominated it in terms of the stats, but sadly we haven't got the win. A one all draw isn't enough to get us that record points total. We need to still win our last game, which is against Forest Green, I think, at home. So hopefully we can do that. As I say, we'll go through a proper end of season roundup at the end of the Forest Green game. And I'll probably explain all my thoughts again there and just kind of run through. But in terms of definitely players that we need to kind of look to sort out, it's definitely Jan Dander. And it's probably the left-sided forward for us as well. And then we'll have a kind of a think over the summer. Depends, as I say, who is available. It really does. You can kind of be kind of have these great grand plans of being, I'm going to sign with players. If no one becomes available who wants to join, you're a bit stuck. But guys, that is the first game. Really, really quickly, over and done with there with Newport. I'll see you again in the second for the Forest Green game for the final game of our League 2 campaign at home in the Gallagher. So here we are ready for now our second game of the episode. Now with Forest Green Rovers and I've made a few tweaks with our team for this game. Lewis Ward is staying in there. It's then the youngster Lasana Abua at the right side of defence. In fact, actually, no, it's not. I'm going to swap him to the left because I want him going for the headers at the corners. It's going to be Lillian Brassier at the right side of centre back with Buddy Joel and Lasana Abua. Then it's Joel seen it right back and McCallum still at left back. Then it's the same midfield of Cole Palmer, Maddie Smith, and Jan Dander. And I've made a one small change. I've brought in Jamie Thomas up front, play alongside the young Stefani. Because as I mentioned a few moments ago, this could possibly be Jamie Thomas's last game for us. You can see from the star ratings, he's dropped very much in terms of his rating now in comparison to the other players in the team. And he's on too much money. So this could well be his kind of farewell for Maidstone. We have to kind of wait and see 
But that's how we line up this game. Let's see how we do in our final game of League 2. So then let's submit our side and see how we get on. I am hoping we can get the win because I want that record points total as I've already mentioned. And we need that win now. We can't get another draw because we have to get at least two points. And of course the only way of doing it is to of course win. So I'm going to say to the lads assertively I expect nothing but a win. Because that is exactly what I expect to say to them. I expect to see a solid defensive performance. Nobody cared. I say to the rest of the lads I have faith in them. At least that cheered them up. At home, though, in the final game of the season, in the amber and black, I don't think it's quite a sellout. I think it's pretty close from what the reports were saying. I think about 4,500, nearly 5,000 fans, roughly, something like that. And to be honest, we could do with it because our finances are totally in the drain. We're nearly a million pounds in debt. I'll show you the finances at the end of this game. Honestly, we are totally screwed financially. We really are. Unless the, oh, hang on to Farney, the youngster. Oh, he's at the bar. That would have been nice to see him score. He hasn't scored for a little while. But yeah, unless the owners put some money in, I know you get a little bit of money at the end of the League 2 season for the um, solidarity payments, I believe they call it. So we should have to get a little bit, but I don't think it's anything drastic. And I don't think the increase from League 2 to League 1 TV money and prize money will be enough to kind of keep us ticking over. So I don't really know what's going to happen in the summer. There's a lot of talk at the moment in the game of Leeds coming in for a big bid for Cole Palmer. So that could well be what we have to do to kind of balance the books. I'm hoping we don't because I really like Cole Palmer. He's really grown on me. The season's gone by. Joel Senior with another goal, second of the game, ninth of the season. Well done there, Joel. And as I say with, with Cole Palmer, I don't want him to go, but we'll have to obviously see what happens. In some cases, it becomes a bit more needs must that you have to sell. So we'll have to just wait to see what happens. That pass over from Yandan is actually quite good. So, I don't know, I, I, I feel a little bit bad sometimes when I give Yandana so much stick because he has relatively consistent ratings, but I just don't personally see enough from him in, in terms of goals and assists. And that is kind of a big thing that you often will judge an attacking midfielder on. It's not like a central midfielder where they might not score that much or even get that many assists, but it's all about the key passes. Whereas Yandanda, I find, doesn't really do much of anything. But that might be me being harsh. But as I mentioned earlier though, guys, of course, FM21 is now just around the corner. Lasano Abu with a goal though. Uh, lovely goal from the 18 or 19 year old, his third of the season. He's struggled to adapt quite as quick as I was hoping he would. I'm hoping with having half a year on his belt and being able to start the season with us fresh next year, he should kind of kick on a little bit. But as I was just saying, no, FM21 just around the corner. And of course, I believe we have roughly about five weeks until the beta. So we haven't got a huge amount of time left for this series now unfortunately with, with the stones rolling on up so of course with that I'm thinking with next season I'm going to make it a little bit quicker we won't be coming back for as many games as we normally will do even though it's going to be a new league I'm going to probably keep it so that we kind of space out the games relatively uh, distance and we won't necessarily come back for like all the FA Cup games or League Cup games unless we get quite far in it that way we can try and speed things up a bit and hopefully Maybe make the Premier League before FM21 comes out. If it doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen. It will be a bit sad, to be honest. But, of course, we can always go again, either in FM21 or in a later Football Manager with Maidstone. I've already got a couple of plans for FM21. Let's do our team talk, though, here. I'm going to say to the lads, because we're doing pretty well, just don't look at the scoreboard. Don't let your performances drop. They all were pretty happy with that. And so I've already got some plans kind of figured out. My B to save I've definitely got confirmed. And you'll be seeing over the next couple of days or possibly next week, my first kind of FM21 video where it's going to be like a little bit of a, a pre-intro kind of kind of teams you can manage type, type video coming on the channel. And I will probably introduce my own FM21 save during that video. So if you're interested, take a look. And I'll probably be putting it on Twitter as well in the next few days. But in terms of other saves... I will probably do something a little bit similar once the full game comes out to Maidstone, but maybe not in England. I haven't fully decided yet. I've got one or two teams in mind. I'm going to kind of keep that a bit close to the chest for the moment, though. But I have to obviously wait and see. I'm really looking forward to FM21. Lovely goal again from Joel Cena. He's now hit double figures for the season. And, yeah, really looking forward to FM21. And I'm just hoping that it kind of has a few improvements from FM20. Takes the good things and, take, and doesn't include in the bad things, mainly the old one-on-ones. I still remember from the, when the game first came out in FM20 and how many problems there were with trying to score one-on-one -on -one with strikers. It still is difficult at this point, but as long as there isn't something kind of game-breaking like that when the game first releases, it shouldn't be too bad. 
Now, in terms of this game, though, with Forest Green, we're playing really well. I'm going to take off Dander. I'm going to put Cole Palm up front. I'm going to bring on Canas for probably what may well be his last game because I don't know if we're we'll able to get him on loan for another year. And I'm thinking that Thomas can come off for Gillespie. He's had a pretty meh game. So let's bring on Gillespie. Let's bring on Canas for the last kind of half an hour here. At the moment, we are breaking that goal-scoring record. I'm interested as well, Dan, to see what the bottom of the league... I'm for oh, damn it. Gillingham are very, very close to getting relegated, but at the moment they're kind of just about saving themselves. They're now on 39 points in 22nd place. I don't think they're going to get relegated, sadly. That would be a nice little way to kind of be a cherry on top of the uh, League 2 cake, that's for sure, if um, Gillingham got relegated off as we win the league. But that doesn't look like that's going to happen, unfortunately. But still, it looks like this game is still going on. Forest Green haven't entirely given up at the moment, it would seem, despite being 3-0 down. I don't know if we're going to see another goal in this game. At the moment, Forest Green have the ball kind of in our half. I haven't really been commentating the game, but are kind of keeping on what happens here. Because if they score, it could be a little bit nervy for the last few minutes. It looks like it's, they're going to get the ball in with Hunt here. And it's going to bolt in way too much space. That was horrendous defending. As a result, I'm just going to put the fullbacks on defend duties instead. And I'm going to bring on Danny Preston. We'll go cautious for the last few minutes. We'll go a bit more time waste to take the players off the overlap. Stop passing into space. That type of stuff. I do not want to drop points because I want that points record. Come on, right. Lewis Ward with the ball. Is this actually a proper highlight? No, he's just Lewis Ward panicking and kicking the ball out miles. Oh, no. Don't be a goal. Okay, it's just over. Phew. I was going to say, don't get a second with like five minutes even to play because that will not be good. We'll go defensive and hopefully that should be the end of the game. And it looks like it is. It is a 3-1 victory at home. We got the points record in League 2. I'm going to say to the lads passionately, very nice victory. Well done. And let's just get to this screen. I want to have a look at this message here. Is it going to tell me that we got it or hasn't told me at the moment? I'm pretty sure we have. If we go back and have a look at the records. Yes, we have. Most points in a season. 104 from Maidstone in the 2022-2023. 2023 season so it is indeed made Sunday night to get in there oh what a brilliant year we've had with the lads honestly it's so so good we've actually got a little bit of prize money as well I mean 25 grand's worth and that's not even a week's wages that that's given to us but even so it's better than nothing in terms of finances though as I did say we're not quite as horrendous as we have been we're now at negative 869 thousand pounds as I say by the, probably the end of the season, it'll probably be closer to a negative a million if we're not careful. We will get some sponsorship money and some solidarity money, as I already mentioned. So hopefully we can kind of balance the books, but it's really tough to tell. We've got a decent amount in wage budget to spend for next season. I will not be spending that amount. No way, because we cannot afford it. I, the game is a bit weird when it gives you a wage budget. It, does, it gives you kind of the maximum that the club can spend, I think, to avoid going to financial fair play doesn't actually give you an amount that the club should be spending. So I never normally max it out, so I definitely won't be. But we've got a decent amount to spend regardless because we've got a couple of players that have been moving on and stuff as well. Transfer budget is 15 grand, which isn't even a signing on fee pretty much at this level. So we can kind of ignore the transfer budget for now. In terms of the squad, though, and the overall end of season roundup, I'm going to search it by goals. It's been pretty spread out, to be honest. A lot more than it has in previous seasons, especially last year when Jamie Thomas was like the top goal scorer by a mile. We haven't really got an out-and-out -out top goal scorer. It is, in all argument's sake, Martin Gillespie, the young 19-year-old signing who joined us from Stockport at the beginning of the year, but only by one goal. He's played 38 games, scored 17 goals, got five assists. You then have Ike Ugbo, who hasn't had a brilliant average rating, at least recently. He's, been, he's kind of dropped off the ball towards the end of the season but he's played 43 games he's got 16 goals and 15 assists so you can kind of see why I do like Ike and if I can't find a replacement for him then I'm not going to be upset because he scores goals and he assists goals which I love I love that from a striker so I've got no issues with him the main issue I have with any of the players up front is in Jamie Thomas now he played 35 games he only got the 12 goals which is still decent but it's this bit over here the three grand a week and as I say, he's only got a year left on his deal. He ends in 2024, so I probably will be looking to sell him in the summer. I don't know if anyone will buy it because of that high wage, but I'm hoping somebody does. After Jamie Thomas, the top goal scorer is Joel Senior, which I find hilarious. 
the fact Joel Cena at right back has 10 goals and it's not like he scores many from set pieces. He just kind of comes in on the right and just gets on the other crosses every time. I don't understand it, but he's had a very good year. 36 games, 10 goals, 4 assists. There's probably a good chance that it will still be him and Zach Swanson at right back for me next season. They've both been pretty decent and I think they can still do a job in League One. It's probably the same on the left back as well, to be honest. Danny Preston and Sam McCallum, they've both been very decent. McCallum, I believe, has some of the most assists in 11. Yeah, he's second highest in the team for assists. So again, very good year from them too. You've got Carl Palmer and you've got also Matty Smith in midfield. If I search the players by their key passes... We have a look. Matty Smith is top of that tree with three and a half key passes per 90 minutes. And you've also got Cole Palmer up there with 1.89 and almost 0.5 chances per game. To be fair to Jan Dander, I've just seen on here actually his statistics for the matches he's played. He's actually got slightly better ratings than Cole Palmer, to be honest. I hadn't realised that, but I don't know. We'll see what happens next season. He may well still be first choice. I don't know yet. But currently, kind of go with the anticipation that he will be leaving, but or at least a replacement will be coming in. If he stays, though, then he stays. He's a very good player, nonetheless. As I already mentioned with Canas, I don't know if he'll be staying for another year. With him being on loan, I don't know if Palace will let us have him for another season. They may do. They may want to keep him, though. Have to wait and see on that one. And as I've already mentioned with Cole Palmer as well, he is wanted. You can see on that list there... A lot of clubs are interested, really frustratingly. He has got two years left on his deal, so we don't really have to sell. It's only if his release clause is met, which if I show you on here, is £1.7 million for any team in the leagues above. So essentially a championship side or higher, if they bid £1.7 million, he will get sold. I don't know if a club will activate that or if they won't. If they do, then it's a lot of money. It's £1.7 million in the day for a player who is good, but would you say that's a £1.7 million player? I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. We could probably easy, easily get another player of a similar ability on a free transfer, to be totally honest, because that's just how football manager works. And that's how football works in general, to be honest. So we'll have to wait and see. Overall, though, guys, we have had one hell of a season. I'm so, so happy with how it's gone. And I am so excited for League One and who we could bring in to strengthen the side. But I think that's going to just about wrap up this season roundup. What a season it's been. Champions of League 2. Get in there. So then guys, that just about wraps up today's episode and our League 2 campaign. I really hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have. Of course, this episode, we've seen us break that record points total as League Champions. 104 points in a season it is fantastic. Fantastic. If someone said that to me at the beginning of this season, I would have told them to go stuff themselves and there's no chance that's happening. But we've done it. I cannot believe it. I really can't. Just been essentially a perfect season. It really has been. We've had no major injuries other than Zach Swanson one at the end. We've had no major issues of players getting upset and no big losing streaks or streaks without winning any games. It's just kind of gone very well. Yeah, we didn't have the cup runs we've had in previous seasons, but... At the end of the day, you'd always take winning the league over just kind of having a cup run and struggling the league. So I'm always going to take the league win, essentially. Overall, though, just fantastic. Fantastic year. Really good performances from pretty much everyone in the squad. It really has been. Hopefully, though, guys, you have enjoyed today's episode and you've enjoyed the season as a whole. If you have enjoyed the episode, then please do chuck a like on it because it really does help the channel out. And let me know down in the comment section who you think we should look to replace and if possible, any potential signings we should look to bring in. Of course, we're only, what, four years in, so there's still a lot of real kind of youngsters floating around. Maybe players' contracts still coming up that you might be aware of that happen in-game. So do let me know down in the comment section below. And if you're looking forward to seeing any more of my content, whether that being Stones rolling on up, or any of my experiments, or possibly any upcoming FM21 content I've kind of got planned, then do make sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with everything here on LS Plays FM. But guys, thank you very much for watching. I will see you again next time.